Hey everybody, welcome back to Outspoken Wheels on Wheels. This week we're going to talk about the heater that we talked about last week. I'm going to give a little bit more of an explanation on how we actually got it going. The instructions weren't very clear so it was really hard to figure out. Um, my friend that was in the video last week that was figuring it out um, phoned me the next day and explained what it was that he did. I thought I knew what he did but um, I was wrong. So anyways we're going to get that cleared up in the first part of this video and the second part of this video I purchased an uh, Alpicool cooler and I'm just going to show how I get that going and also I've been really curious how much power it burns. I have a Jackery 500 and I don't know if that was going to be enough power for me uh, so we're going to have a look at both those things. Um, if you're not interested in those things, this is going to be a really boring week for you and I'm really sorry. I really am struggling to get content. Hopefully by the end of this week I will be able to start loading my van to take off somewhere. And so next week's video will be more about actually being in my van or at least the process of getting in so you'll be able to see a bit more detail on how I've set up my van. That'll be next week, I hope. Anyways, let's get going with this week. So as I mentioned last week, uh, this week I'm going to talk about why the, how I got the heater going. So that little notch in the butane canister actually has to go in a certain spot. I never even noticed the notch. And you see that little flap that I lift up with my index finger? Well, you just make sure the notch goes under that flap. And then everything else goes the way it's supposed to. So you lock it in. And then you have to pull the little safety lever. and then just turn the dial until it snaps and that's actually lights it and then it's lit. It's lit. Okay everybody, here's my new LP Cool uh, fridge or freezer. Not, It's not a dual zone one. Um, it's quite large. It's a lot bigger than I thought. It's about 50 liters. I don't remember the exact amount, but it, it's about 50 liters, and I just purchased it online from Amazon. It was about $700 with tax and delivery and everything. That's Canadian dollars. And uh, I'm going to do a little test today. So that's why I have my Jackery out. I have a Jackery 500, and I haven't used this Jackery since I got back from Arizona. Um, and I've been back from Arizona about six weeks, so I went and uh, just check to see how much um, how much power I had left on it and it was still at a hundred percent I love this Jackery it, it did me well down in Arizona and um, supplied all my uh, power needs and uh, now that I'm home and have been home for six weeks and it still hasn't lost its charge I just I don't know to me that's pretty amazing all right I've plugged in my my cooler to my Jackery via the 12 volt. And I'll just turn this on and make sure it's still at 100%. Yep, still reading 100%. I haven't turned on the fridge yet, so it's got no draw on it. Uh, just, uh, let's try that. Okay, gonna turn it on. I guess it helps if you turn on the Jackery first. Okay, pressing the up down button for the temperature setting. Don't want it to freeze because I probably will just be using it as a cooler or a fridge. That's in Fahrenheit. Wonder if there's a way to switch that. So I don't want it to freeze. I believe freezing in Fahrenheit is about 32 degrees, so we'll have it cool to 36. So right now it's at 68, and it's 12:24 when I turned this on. So we'll see how long it takes to get to the actual temperature. Okay, just a little check-in. It's been five minutes and the 
the Jackery is now pulling 45 watts. And I don't know what any of that means. But it doesn't seem to be cooling down. If anything, it's getting warmer. Okay. We're going to redo that because I've read the instructions and they seem more clear to me now. So, let me turn the fridge. The writing is so small, I have to keep looking at the paper. So, return the power button switch to on. Press up or down for temperature sending. I've done that. I'll just check it. 35. Press the set button and choose eco. Oh, okay. Did you see that? Eco. This little. Or max. I want it on eco. Okay, and then turn off the fridge. Press the set. Turn off the fridge and press the set button until the E1. Keep pressing the set button until E5 and press plus or minus to select Celsius or Fahrenheit. So press and hold. and then want Celsius. I'm now setting the temperature to plus three. Okay, it's 1235. I'm going to see how long it takes for it to get to that. And when I had the... It's on eco mode for cooling down, and it's pulling 32 watts right now. We'll see how long it takes to get to temperature. Okay, I've switched it to max mode now. It's 12.45. I'm going to see how long it takes to get down to temperature now. It was going very slowly on that um, eco mode, so let's see. And at this mode, it still says it's still drawing 32 watts. I don't know if it takes a few minutes for that to change, but I'll come back in five minutes and see where we're at. Okay, I don't know if you can hear that, but the fridge has started to rattle. I'm sure not going to be happy with that when I'm in my van, because the smaller space is probably just going to exaggerate that sound in my mind. Um, but when the fridge arrived, I don't know if you can tell, but the vents down there were damaged. They're dented. Um, you can see the I expect this was probably sent to somebody else and they sent it back for some reason. Anyways, it is damaged and I don't like the sound it's making. Okay, we're about five minutes in um, to the max mode charging and the Jackery now shows that we're pulling 49 watts, although that's still going up. Maybe it'll stay there and we'll check back in in a bit. Seems like it's leveled out at drawing about 48 watts on max mode while it's getting down to temperature. And right now it's about 8 degrees Celsius, so another 3 degrees and it'll be fully charged. Or fully cooled, pardon me. Alright, it's been about 15 minutes and it just shut down. It just got to temperature. I hope that's why it shut down. Let's open it up and see how cool it is. Yep, feels cool. And let's see how much battery it took. It's at 98% now. 
Okay, so the next test I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it on for an hour and we'll see how much battery it it um, how much battery it took. So we're at 98% and I'm going to set the clock for an hour and I'll come back and see what the difference is. Um, by the way, I'm in my house and it's about 22 degrees Celsius in here. Uh, when I started to cool this down, it was around 18 degrees Celsius inside the cooler and I got it down to five degrees Celsius and it took um, a little under 15 minutes and took 2% of my battery just to get it down to charge or down to the temperature that I have it set at, which is five degrees Celsius. And um, yeah. So it's been an hour since we last looked at the cooler and um, it hasn't come on once. So I actually tried to turn it on and nothing is happening. I have loads of battery. It's not drawing only one watt, but it won't turn on. So I will check the troubleshooting. Otherwise, I guess on Monday I'll be calling somebody about it. I sure don't want to return it because I don't know how I'm going to manage that big box. First of all, to get it back in the box. And then how am I going to get that to wherever I'm supposed to take it? Hopefully they'll come and pick it up if it's if there's something defective about this. But let me have a look at the instructions and I'll get back to you. So just after I said it wouldn't start, all of a sudden it started all by itself. And it's actually set to 3 degrees Celsius, and it's at 10 degrees Celsius, and it was off for a whole bunch of time. So honestly, I'm totally confused by this thing, and not sure that it's working properly, or if I just don't know how to work it properly. Anyways, I'll do some more reading. Just an update on this. It shut off maybe two hours ago and I thought I would give it more time this time and it's still off and I've hit the button a couple of times now and it's not coming back on so this is definitely a defective model is what I would guess. Well, I figured out why the power won't come back on. I jiggled the, uh, the plug that plugs in to the unit down there and it came on and it and so I jiggled it some more and it just it would not go in all the way and so it's just loose and that's not going to work for me so I'm going to try another alternative here with the um, regular wall outlet one so I will try this and let's this and let's see what happens okay so I have it plugged into the regular wall outlet plug and it definitely was not working the other way because the temperature is now at 11 degrees Celsius and it's supposed to be at 3. So I now have it plugged into the AC and with all the testing before I was actually at 94%, or sorry, I started off at 100, all that fiddling around before used about 6% of my battery. Right now it's drawing 52 watts and I'll give it some time to cool down and then we'll just see if this one works better. It's kind of disappointing because I can't use the 12 volt which is what I wanted to use because I have way more appliances that plug in by AC than 12 volt. So anyways let's see how this goes now. All right, that's it for this week. I just wanted to let you know that um, the I ran the cooler for 10 hours after I got it going properly. And it, uh, it ran for those full 10 hours on eco mode and it burned 25% of my battery. So I had 75% of my battery left. So I'm pretty happy with that. I think at some point I probably will need to get more battery power but right now, I think that's going to do me. I actually bought 
um, 100 watt solar panel that I'll be using when I'm traveling as well. Uh, so I don't have to travel all the time and hopefully that will do some of the charging for me. Anyways, that's it for this week. I'll see you again next week.